Baylor's Adam Flegler bounced the back of his head off the court twice in today's game against UNC. He clearly looked symptomatic, but was then sent back into the game one play later with no clear actual evaluation for a concussion. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. When I see something as terrible as what happened earlier today with Adam Flegler, I'm gonna call it out. This was the second play. Look how aggressively his head smacks against the back of the court as he falls to the ground. Whiplash in and of itself, with his head snapping backwards as he goes to the ground, is enough to potentially lead to a concussion. But then when you combine that with his head actually striking the court, this is definitely a scenario where we can see a concussion. It's pretty obvious in the sequence afterwards here that Flegler is in pain. He's grabbing the back of his head, he's slow to get up, this poor kid looks miserable out there after hitting the back of his head against the court. As he steps up to the free throw line, you can see his eyes. He clearly looks dazed here, and this is the exact scenario where you should be very suspicious of a concussion. We've got an athlete with a mechanism consistent for a concussion, the whiplash, the head striking the back of the ground. We have an athlete grabbing the back of his head in pain, and now we have an athlete displaying concerning signs and symptoms of a possible concussion. That's enough for an evaluation of a concussion in my book. Whenever this whole sequence unfolds here, of course, we don't even see any medical personnel come out here until later on in this sequence. Presumably this is one of the medical staff members, but it doesn't look like there's any actual, hey, how are you feeling? Hey, what's going on? Are you having a headache? Checking to see if he's concussed. Thankfully, the rules at least forced him to come off of the court, but this wasn't the choice of the Baylor medical staff to get him off. The rules forced him to come off for at least a play, and of course we saw him go right back in. Here's Flegler on the bench, head is in his hands, clearly looks uncomfortable. I don't know what assessment's being done here, I don't know what they're asking him. We can see again, his eyes, he looks like he's dazed, he's got that foggy look of somebody who could have a concussion. We don't see any assessment of his neurologic status, we don't see any tracking of his eyes, we really don't see any actual evaluation being done here on the sideline. They're actually turning to watch the game and not actually talking to him to do a more formal assessment. And then of course, the very next play, as soon as the rules permit him to go back in over the span of maybe one to two minutes of actual time, Flagler's put back into the game. Note two here, this was actually the second time that he appeared to hit his head on the back of the court. Earlier in the game, he took this charge, getting hit to the head, and then again, looking like he hits the back of his head on the court. As he gets knocked down, we again see that significant whiplash with his head appearing to strike the court. If the NCAA wants to be taken seriously and caring about players' health, then this needs to be questioned. This needs to be talked about. There needs to be some sort of explanation here as to why a proper concussion assessment wasn't performed when you have an athlete who has an obvious mechanism for a possible concussion with hitting their head, is displaying signs and symptoms on the court of a concussion, and then is immediately put back into the game. Now look, I get it. I've been in this situation on the sidelines where somebody comes off, they look like they're maybe a little bit dazed, confused, but they can't remember what happened and we didn't see what happened. But here we saw it. We saw him grabbing the back of his head after being knocked down to the ground with endless replays in the arena. So there's no excuse to say, well, we didn't see him hit his head. We didn't see him grabbing the back of his head because we clearly did. Also, the people watching this on TV aren't idiots. I mean, the comments going around on Twitter after we saw this happened, fans understand what's going on here. Fans see somebody hit their head, they see them grabbing the back of their head, and they realize that this could very well be a concussion. They see the way things are managed, and then fans start to feel like, again, the NCAA and these teams aren't truly looking out for player health and safety. The NCAA and the medical staffs of these teams have a responsibility to look out for the health and safety of the players. That's exactly why they're there. In no way can you expect a player to remove themselves from the game in this situation, so you can't put any of this blame on Flagler. I certainly hope Flagler is feeling okay and I feel terrible that he was in that situation where there was likely all that pressure for him to go back into the game when he otherwise appeared to not be feeling like he was 100% there. I wanna bring attention to this type of stuff because I think it's important that fans are just as aware of the importance of player health and safety as the teams are because fans can put pressure on the teams, fans can put pressure on the NCAA and the organizations that need to implement the changes and the proper steps to ensure that we truly are looking out for the health and safety of these individuals. Your brain physiology doesn't care if it's the final 10 seconds of the national championship game or it's an early preseason practice. I certainly wonder how things will be handled differently if we would have seen this occur in the first five minutes of the first or second game of the season. And that in and of itself should make everybody question why things were handled the way they were. Concussions don't care if it's the last 10 seconds of the national title game or if it's outside in your backyard playing pickup ball. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.